Hello, thank you for coming to today's session. I hope you're finding it useful. My name is Chris Dove, and I'm director of the British Council in Barcelona, Spain. In Spain, a new recruit, typically, would be offered a temporary contract normally related to a, a July summer course. July is when many of our, our regular teachers take their leave, and we have high demand for summer courses across Europe, and frequently take on temporary teachers to fill their place. This is very often the first experience a new teacher will have with one of our teaching centers. A new recruit joining our Western European teaching centers will typically begin work on Saturday. Saturdays is usually our busiest day, although recently it's, uh, it's closely rivaled by Friday evenings. And a few years ago, Friday evenings were impossible to fill. Nowadays, Friday evenings are as popular as Saturday mornings. So typically, a new recruit find a timetable made up of Saturdays, possibly Friday evenings, and maybe a couple of other evenings along the way. Shifts are very common. <clears throat> Early morning work, teaching business people, lunchtime work, teaching school children during their lunch break. Afternoon work, especially in Italy, with secondary children who become free at 2 to 30 in the afternoon. And the vast bulk of our work in the evenings with primary and secondary children as well as adults. In Western Europe, we, we pay good market rates because we want to recruit and retain the right people. Uh, simply because we understand, and you've heard it already this afternoon, that our students value our teachers above anything else to do with us. And that's where we invest most seriously. It's very difficult to get a full-time contract in one of our European, one of our Western European teaching centers first off. So very often, the first contract will be 10 hours, 12 hours a week, uh, which I hasten to say is not going to provide a salary sufficient to live on. What I mean to say, of course, is that this means teachers will be making up a teaching portfolio of work with us, work freelancers teaching private teacher uh, private students and work possibly with competitors or in other spheres possibly um, possibly um, normal school classes possibly years or so down the line a permanent core contract would emerge with maybe 10 or 12 hours um, <coughs> as a permanent core and additional hours built around that in Italy, there is a core of full-time teachers working in Italy, in our teaching centers in Italy, typically on 24 hours teaching a week. Typically, the, the first contracts in Italy will be temporary contracts lasting up to about three years when uh, they become permanent. Uh, by which stage, we would expect the teacher of, to have acquired a delta and be prepared to make that sort of full-time commitment to the British Council. So common in Italy is the, the figure of the freelance teacher. We employ freelance teachers mostly to teach off-site this work, off-site uh, corporate contract work. In Portugal, currently the maximum contract is 18 hours teaching per week and there is uh, additional to that paid substitution work available. To move on now from uh, the sort of opportunity that is available in uh, Western Europe to how I see the business developing, 
at it from a certain point of view, a number of threats to the work we do in, language, in English language teaching. One is improved teaching in schools. In truth, the teaching of English language in schools in Italy and Spain in particular has been very poor until now. In Spain, we've worked very closely with the, uh, with the Ministry of Education on a program of bilingual schools to show an alternative way of approaching uh, language teaching, English language teaching in the schools. And this has been extraordinarily successful in encouraging similar programs around the country. There's another side to that bargain. Uh, the Bologna process is putting a lot of pressure on university students and university aspirants to achieve higher levels of English language for the purpose of their study. In order to obtain their degrees, they're required to have a, lev a B2 level of English, and commonly they're for B1 level to get access to a university degree course now. Both Italy and uh, Spain have um, programs delivered through their national TV uh, channels uh, which teach English language. Uh, they're based mostly on BBC material, but in both cases they've taken that BBC material and developed it further with uh, support material for their local markets. Computer-based learning was very popular, became very, very popular in the 80s, both in um, Italy and in Spain, to a certain extent in Portugal. So, mid-term, if we're talking about 10 years from now, I think we still have a good market. I think we still have a good place in that market, but it will change. Certainly, the major demand, and it's right at the top of the list now, from people in work uh, requiring English language at an increasingly high level, purely and simply to stay in work, uh, let alone progress in their jobs, uh, is, a, is a reality that's going to be with us for, for some time to come in these Western European countries. With that, I hope I've maintained your enthusiasm that was kindled by my colleagues earlier on, and that you will at some point consider a, uh, a job with the British Council in English language teaching in Europe. Thank you very much.